Hey everyone, welcome back to the Canadian Path Assistant channel. My name is Luke, I'm a pathologist assistant working in Canada, and today I want to talk to you about certification and how a few small differences could make you up to an extra $28,000 a year. Alright, so it's December, near Christmas, got my Santa t-shirt on, and I was just thinking that at this time of year, or at the end of a calendar year, it's usually coming up to a certification time for someone, so that was kind of the motivation behind this video. I wanted to split things up into a couple different parts. I want to go over just why you actually need certification, uh, what certification options are out there, how you actually are going to go about getting the certification, and the small differences that might actually end up making you thousands of dollars uh, difference in your earnings, and then how you're going to actually stay certified once you've gotten it. First off, why do I actually need certification? Now, I think this point is going to be a little bit more applicable for Canadians than it is Americans, but right now, at this point in time in Canada, PAs are not federally regulated, so that means people can hire PAs, you can work as a PA without actually needing to be certified. Now, that said, some employers do require certification of their PAs, so it's, uh, it's sort of job by job specific, but that is a definite good reason to get that certification. For Americans, my understanding is that working in the US, you do require certification no matter where you're working, uh, if you're going to work as a PA. I've also seen some cases where employers will either reduce your salary by up to 10%, which could be, you know, seven to $10,000 maybe or more, depending on your starting salary. Uh, and also, if, if certification is a condition of your employment, you could potentially lose that employment if you don't meet your certification standards within a certain time frame. All right, number two, what certification options are out there for PAs? Okay, so we've established that, yeah, certification is good. You should probably get certified. But unfortunately, it's not as simple as as soon as you're done school, you're now a certified PA. Just like doctors, nurses, paramedics, and other professional organizations, you have to complete some kind of certification process after your training program. Uh, for us, what does that look like? Well, that's going to be an exam from our governing bodies, so whether that's the Canadian Certified Council of Pathologists Assistants, which is a huge mouthful, uh, they're just the CCCPA or the Triple CPA, or from the American Society of Clinical Pathologists or ASCP. All right, number three, how to certify myself. So each of the certification bodies we are going to take a look at have fairly similar certification requirements, but there are a few key differences between the two of them, uh, enough so that I'll try and point them out where I do see them. So first of all, the CCCPA certification for Canadian PAs. So this is going to be just a screenshot from the website of the CCCPA, just showing you a bunch of the different routes for certification that you can take to applying for certification. Uh, as you can see, there are routes that include on-the-job training, which require a bachelor minimum, two years experience, and you have to write an exam before the end of 2024. There's also a few grandfathered positions which don't require you to write any exam at all. Uh, there's also routes for PA schools, and these schools can be NACLS accredited or non-NACLS accredited. But, uh, but I would say the NACLS accredited program route is the least complicated way to actually get certification in Canada. Now, as you can see, there's a bunch of different routes that are available. I would highly recommend that if you have not gone through PA school yet, or if you're looking at this for the first time, attend, attend a NACLS accredited institution. It'll make things a lot easier, um, both for this application and, as we'll talk about in a little bit, for the American application as well. Uh, for anyone who wants to sort through the details and fine print on this, I'm just going to put a link down the, in the description and you can sort through that on your own time. Once you've decided or identified on your actual application route, uh, you have to apply for certification and then once you become eligible, you can write the exam. Uh, technically, if you went through a PA program, you have three years to apply for certification and then another two years after that to actually write your exam. So it could be up to five years before you actually write your exam from when you finish school to writing it. To me, that seems like a really long time to wait. I wouldn't wait that long. Uh, you kind of get out of the flow of studying and of the learning process. I would just suggest that you write it kind of as soon as you feasibly can by the time that you finish your program. Some other things to note for the Canadian exam, the writing locations that are actually provided 
are fairly limited throughout the year. So there's only about five or six of them throughout the year. And they're in very specific locations that you may have to travel to. Uh, I realize any kind of travel at this point in time with all the COVID restrictions going on is tenuous at best. So what I would do is I would contact either the exam committee or if there's contact information listed for the exam proctor, I would speak to them and see if there's any other options for having uh, have an exam done at your location so you don't have to travel and mix with other people who are also potentially traveling. Uh, something else to consider, this exam is a pen and paper exam. The results are not immediate, so after you write it, you have to send it back to be marked. Uh, while that may be a disadvantage in some ways, I, I think it actually makes this exam a lot easier because the questions are, uh, they're just pen and paper, they don't change based on your answers, and you are just looking at a 75% to pass this exam. And that, as, as we'll see compared to the American exam in a minute, that is actually a lot simpler than you may otherwise think. I should also mention, once you get your certification, uh, it needs to be renewed every three years, but the very first year that you certify, you actually have till the end of the year, of the year that you first certify before your three year period begins. So this can actually make your recertification period almost four years long for that very first time through the cycle. Next up, the ASCP certification. This is largely relevant for American PAs as this is what is looked for in the States, but also for Canadian PAs who are in a couple unique positions, I think this is also beneficial for you too. Those that would benefit from the certification are any looking to work as a instructor or teacher in an ACLS accredited program or be in ACLS. Uh, sorry, or be a program director for one of those programs, you actually require that AACP certification to do so. There are also some just standard grossing positions that I've seen posted online that require only the AACP certification. And this is where you can actually pot potentially make a lot more money than your you know, coworkers or counterparts who don't have this certification. Some of the job postings I've seen have listed salaries up to $28,000 more than the highest paying salary for a CCCPA certified pathologist assistant. So something to consider down the line that is actually pretty significant. Additionally, if you're a Canadian and you're looking to work in the States, duh, get the certification. Um, across the board, the requirements are fairly similar to the CCCPA, but um, there's a few major differences which we'll go over right now. So all applicants must come from a NACLS accredited program. That is, uh, there's no other route for application like the CCCPA. That is the only way you're getting in. Similarly, you have five years after your program completion date to write it. Uh, you have a limited number of rights that you can take. But one of the other probably biggest and most significant differences in my mind is that the exam itself is done on a computer and utilizes this, this system called computer adapt adaptive testing, which means that as you answer questions either correctly or incorrectly, the exam will get more or less difficult depending on your previous responses. And actually as you go through the exam, when you answer a question correctly, the next question you get will be more difficult and the exam requires you to get a certain percentage of the more difficult questions correct to actually pass. So it's not just a straight get 75%, you actually have to get a certain percentage, like I said, of those more difficult questions correctly. One other big advantage of this exam is that it is hosted of testing centers that are spread throughout the country. So it's actually really easy to book an exam and just show up within your own city. You don't have to travel really anywhere. Um, the exam times, you can book at a time of your own choosing. All you gotta do is book it and then show up. Almost a no brainer. And then similar to the CCCPA, this exam certification needs to be renewed every three years. All right, fourth, continuing education. So both ASCP and CCCPA require you to recertify every three years. And within that recertification cycle, you need to get a certain number of CE credits to qualify for recertification. Those credits can come from different categories like anatomic pathology, lab safety, medical ethics, etc. There's a, several different categories that you can get them through. And some places that you can actually get credits are from attending rounds. So those can be PA rounds, um, grand rounds, different types of rounds or educational things held at your hospital. If you present at a rounds or conferences, uh, if you have any publications that you put out, if you do any clinical or academic teaching, 
and AAP quizzes are another great source for easy CE credits. There's actually a more comprehensive list which I'll link in the description below and those can largely be used for both CCCPA and ASCP recertification. There are, as usual, a couple slight differences between the two of them. Uh, in Canada, the 60 credit um, the 60 credit max, I guess, needs to be divvied up in such that you get 15 credits minimum per year. So you can't do all 60 in your last year. It has to be at least 15 in each of the years. Also in Canada, you're not submitting your credits directly as you get them. You're actually just signing a form saying, yes, I did it. And you're hanging on to those yourself. If you do get audited, then you'll have to provide those. In contrast to the ASCP, you're actually submitting your credits as you get them, so you're not looking at potentially facing an audit down the line. There are also a couple of restrictions in the categories in which you can get credits. You can't, for example, get all your credits from doing clinical or academic teaching. Usually there's a set number you can get or have to get from maybe anatomic pathology, from lab safety, etc, etc. So just something to consider so you're not planning on getting everything just from having students rotate through and you having them shadow you, for example. So that's it for today's video. Uh, thanks everyone for stopping by. Appreciate you coming along on this journey with me. Hopefully that gave you some good insights on the certification process as well as recertification. And I will see you next time.